experiment today, experiment 8, is looking at a copper chloride complex which has water of hydration. A bit like a damp cloth which is soggy with water, we can dry the cloth and drive off the water. And likewise, the water in this complex isn't physically, chemically bonded to the copper chloride, it's just damp in the atmosphere from the water. So we're going to work out what the chemical formula is for this copper chloride compound with water of hydration. We know when a compound has water of hydration because we put a full stop in front of the H2O formula for water. So, first part of the experiment is going to be to drive off that water. So we're going to take your sample and put it in a crucible and without the lid, we're going to heat up for a couple of minutes with the Bunsen burner. This will drive off the water, and as the water is driven off and evaporates, your copper chloride compound will turn from a blue-green aqua colour into a dark brown colour, which is the colour of the copper chloride when water is driven off. Apply heat for a couple of minutes, then remove the heat, take a spatula and scrape around a bit and look for any blue-green colour underneath. You want to make sure that all of the water is driven off. Then put the Bunsen flame back underneath with the hot blue flame of course and then heat for a little bit longer. If you hear your sample start to crackle then you're heating too much. And remove the heat source once more. Once you've finished driving off the water, then take the crucible lid and put it back on the top of the crucible just to make sure as it cools that water doesn't start to collect on your sample again. So by comparing the mass of the sample in the crucible before the water was driven off and the mass after when it is driven off, we can work out the amount of water in grams. We can take that mass divide it by the molar mass for water, 18 grams per mole, and work out the number of moles of water that was in your sample. Now that the water has been driven off, we can now try and remove the copper from the copper chloride sample. So add your copper chloride to a beaker of water. We don't care about the water anymore because we know how much water is in the original sample. Put it in water to dissolve it into solution and add in a piece of aluminium wire. Now the copper ions in the aluminium are set up to perform a redox reaction, a reduction oxidation. With the copper ions in solution picking up electrons from the aluminium, so the copper is being reduced as it picks up electrons. Now the aluminium is the supplier of the electrons, the aluminium itself is being oxidised. So the aluminium is also the reducing agent because it supplies the electrons to make the reduction of the copper happen. And the copper itself is also an agent, it's an agent for oxidation. It takes the electrons from the aluminium to allow the oxidation to happen. Now the redox reaction itself will take a considerable amount of time, probably somewhere close to 30 minutes. You'll know the reaction is still going because you'll see the bubbling on the aluminium wire from a side reaction which is producing hydrogen. Once you think the reaction's finished, we want to make sure that all of the aluminium has dissolved into the water, so add a small amount of acid which should help the solvation. Now you're going to use a Buchner funnel apparatus to filter off the copper and after it's been under vacuum for four or five minutes add in a small amount of methanol to soak up and remove any last traces of water. Methanol is a lower boiling solvent than water so the methanol should boil much easier with the vacuum drying. 
Now with the copper recovered from the Buchner funnel, we want to make sure that's absolutely dry, so put your sample in the oven at about 100 degrees Celsius. Give it about 5 minutes to dry, and then take it out, weigh the sample again, then put the sample back in. You're going to have to dry your sample at least twice. Why? Because we want to make sure we've got to a constant mass for the copper. And it's only when that mass no longer changes, as a, after successive runs, that we know for sure that the copper is completely dry. So if the mass changes for a second time when you take the sample out of the oven, you might still have water left in the sample. So again, keep putting that sample back in again and again until the mass no longer changes. That's the only time yet that you are assured that all of the water has been driven off. And for most people, it'll be two or three five minute periods in the oven. With your mass of copper and your mass of water, whatever mass is remaining from the original sample, it must be from chlorine. So to get the number of moles of copper, we take that mass of copper divided by the mass per mole, 63.54 grams, and for the mass of chlorine, divide by 35.45, the mass for a mole of chlorine, and it's going to give us three figures, three very small figures, for the molar amount of copper, chlorine, and water. Now we want to simplify that ratio and turn it into a real big numbers. So whichever one of those three answers is the smallest, divide each of those by the smallest answer. So one of those three answers will be one, dividing the smallest by itself. And whatever numbers you get for the other two, round them down or up as appropriate to the nearest whole number. And that gives you your chemical formula. The chemical formula for the dehydrated compound with just copper and chlorine, and for the hydrated compound with copper, chlorine, and of course, water.